Hello everyone, welcome back to Tribune Sports Live. I'm Brandon Dawkins and I'm here with Pinson basketball coach Daryl Barber. Just a quick recap, it's been a huge year for the Indians. The football team won the 6A state football championship for the second year in a row and now here's the basketball team with a chance to win um, the state basketball championship headed into the final four yes, this week actually Wednesday at 1 30 is yes, when you guys play Correct. coach Barber thanks for joining us thank you for having us well this has been an amazing year y'all y'all were ranked number one part of the season talk to us a little bit about how you've kept the players focused on a high level and maybe not buying into all the hype well um, you know coming in the expectations were already high um, for myself as well as the players. And just throughout the season, we never really thought about the ranking. Um, we just wanted to be number one at the end of the season. And we talked about that often. And just keeping the guys humble was easy because these guys understand the task at hand and they never let it get to them as well. So it was never a big issue. Okay. Well, um, so Kool-Aid McKinstry, <laughs> one of your players, so he hit the winning shot against Huffman Correct. in the last game as time ran out. Talk about the poise your players have showed in the game and through the season? Well, I think it starts with myself and the coaching staff. Um, and as I said before, we always have a game winner, um, a game winning shot that we do before we start practice. Um, so we, you know, when the opportunity came, um, I don't think that he was nervous or anything like that because we've always um, just talked about being humble through those situations. And when it's, you know, if a situation arrives, make sure you're ready for it when the time comes. Um, and it's just how the season has been. We've been through a lot of adverse situations and we've had to overcome some things. So when that came, um, it was just another notch on our belt. You've got some strong leaders um, on this team. What are your expectations of these gentlemen on and off the court? Well, we fully expect on the court uh, to be state champions, and uh, we talk about that all the time. And off the court, you know, they carry themselves as young men. We always talk, to, uh, talk about having character, not being characters. Um, so, you know, that's just the expectation, um, putting um, team before um, yourself. And like I said, on the court, our ultimate goal is to win the state title. And this is um, the school's first trip to the yeah. Final Four. Yeah. This is not your first trip. <laughs> so you won four state championships at midfield, and now you hear, here you are with this team. Yeah. So, um, you know, what, how does that experience help these guys on this journey? Well, I was blessed to win three. At, oh, I said four. Sorry yeah. about that. I, was blessed I wanted three. to give you a little extra. Yeah, I, maybe this will be the fourth <laughs> one right here. Maybe it will be. Um, well, you know, I just kind of talked to the guys about the road, and we have a couple players as well that uh, – has experienced that, uh, that that moved in. And so we just talked to them about, you know, the long journey that is going to be um, so a lot of obstacles along the way. And just, um, you know, just having faith and believing in one another and believing in the um, man above. And we've had some trying times, but just kind of talking about my experiences at midfield, uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, just give them a little insight. But like I said before, I don't want to be beat the midfield drum too much. But we have myself and a couple guys, so that's kind of helped a lot. Okay. Yeah. Offensively, yeah. what do y'all expect from Hillcrest, who's the team you're playing on Wednesday? Well, if you look at us, we're not very big. Um, every team we've played, they've had big guys down low. So we, we expect them to come in and try to pound it down low. Okay. And on the defensive side of the ball, we expect them to try to take Cam out of the game, um, which is our leading scorer. So it's basically everything we've seen thus far. How will the Indians attack Hillcrest? <laughs> We're going to be Pennsylvania Valley. You know, our, our, our style is to get out in transition, uh, to play an up-tempo game because of our size, and we're going to do what we do. Okay. Um, any message that you want to send to the fans for this week? First of all, I want to thank the fans. They've been tremendous thus far. The student section, the community, the support we've had has been overwhelming, and we just want to continue that, and we just want to pack the house. All right. So, again, Wednesday at 1.30 at the BJCC, I know you want to encourage as many people from Please the community come out and school support, most come out and, and, um, and watch the game. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you so much. And we'll be watching. And Thank thanks you. for being with us here today. Thank you for today. having us. No problem. An honor. And we'll be back with more shortly.
Hello everyone, we're back and this time we're going to talk quickly to uh, Pinson Valley Junior and guard on the basketball team, Cam Woods. Cam, thanks for doing this for us. Just tell people quickly, how do you keep this team focused on the floor, especially heading into a really big week? I keep the team focused by not letting them get in the hype, like everybody stay focused, like don't, don't listen to the fans so we can actually make history. What do you expect going into this game, going into the Final Four? What are you expecting from your opponent and from your team? Our opponent, I expect them to like go at our go at our size because we we're small, very small, and I expect everybody to think that we're gonna fail because we never been down there. And for our team, I feel like everybody hungry, so it's gonna be a good game. And I think we're gonna win. All right. Well, good luck this week, and yeah. thanks for being here with us today. Okay. Good one. All right. Thanks. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. Welcome back again, everybody. This time we're with Pinson Valley Principal, Mr. Michael Turner. Uh, Mr. Turner, thanks for joining us. This is your fourth year at Pinson. That's this correct. has been a big year athletically for your school, but let's talk a little bit about the culture academically and athletically at Pinson right now. Well, well, obviously it starts in the classroom, and that's the thing that we will always want to uh, provide for our student athletes is a great opportunity academically to be successful. And then from there, we say, do what you do in the classroom, and obviously the basketball, football, baseball, whatever sport is gonna take care of itself. It's incumbent upon me to hire great people. And so that's my focus primarily, is to make sure that we bring in good quality teachers who just so happen to be perhaps a good coach. Right. Uh, and so therefore, our students see mentors and folks who they know that they can talk to maybe outside of the sports because they know that they're advocates and they're going to help them through whatever challenges. Because, you know, teenagers uh, obviously have an <laughs> a enormous, enormous, right. you know, uh, range of challenges uh, on a day-to-day. -day. And so, therefore, it's our adults in the building that really kind of help guide their train of thought. And uh, coaches, probably more so than any other, uh, because they deal with our students, not just through the hours of 8 to 3, but before and after school and weekends and obviously throughout the entire seasons. So, therefore, we really want to make sure that we get it right the first time when we hire coaches because they impact our, our students' lives in so, so many different ways. Well, how does that apply to Coach Barber? How, how is he off the, off the court? So, so an amazing uh, young man. I say young man because <laughs> I'm probably a year or two his senior, but uh, certainly Coach Barber is someone who I've known for 20-plus years, and uh, his record speaks for itself. Uh, for our seniors, and I think we have six seniors, if my, if my math uh, serves correctly, that have been uh, through the ringer. They've had three different coaches. And so the reality is what we wanted to be able to provide was somebody uh, who was going to come in and first and foremost knew how to run a program, but more importantly knew how to touch kids' lives. And I think for me in my seat, that's the most important thing. The basketball is going to take care of itself. As, as mentioned previously, Coach Barber does an amazing job. Uh, with, with skill development and helping right. students get better on the basketball floor and off the basketball floor. But the thing that I wanted to ensure was that he or whoever the coach that I hired was going to be able to grab a hold of these students and help to guide them post-secondary. And, and, and so as I began to look, uh, the list wasn't very long at all. Coach Barber was at the top of the list. And so he and I had, you know, some dialogue. And uh, as we were able to make it come to fruition, once we uh, were able to bring him in, uh, I knew that there was no doubt in my mind that we were going to experience a very high level of success uh, to this level. I had hoped, not necessarily known, but, you know, <laughs> that's why you got to have faith in, in what we do. And uh, I got faith in him. I have faith in his coaching staff and I have faith in these young men to my right. Uh, that uh, they're going to do just that. So uh, for, 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 for my seat, uh, I'm incredibly, incredibly uh, blessed to be uh, a servant leader to these young men and coaches. And uh, uh, we just hope and pray to the good Lord above that we see this thing through fruition and hopefully are able to hoist a blue map uh, come Saturday afternoon. Well, the perk for any school being in the spotlight athletically with sports is you get the chance to tell people other things about your school. Sure. Um, while you're in that spotlight. What do you like for people to know about Pinson that maybe they don't know? So I would say to, and I'm glad you asked that, I would say to Pinson is a very diverse community. 
I mean, our diversity, uh, you know, is, is, you know, with our, our white, black, Hispanic population, uh, we have uh, students. And growing. Pinson's and, and, growing. And, and it's a growing yeah. community, absolutely. Uh, and, and so to that end, what we want to do is be able to provide something for every one of our students through our career tech programs, through our business tech programs, through uh, obviously the fine arts, performing arts, and then also our athletics. So when you come to Pinson Valley, high school that, that you're going to find something that you can connect to and something that will hopefully prepare you for post-secondary opportunities. And um, so just going back three years ago, our school was labeled as a failing school. Right. And uh, we took that very personal. And uh, some of these guys, remember, I called you, called these guys into the auditorium and I said, a failing school does not tell our story. That's not who we are. And the only way that we're going to have an opportunity to rewrite this story is if we work harder. And they did. And so last year, uh, we went from a failing school to a mm -hmm. D, and then this year we're at a 77. So as you can see, the gradual climb, and a lot of that, uh, I credit our seniors uh, this year because they were the ones that saw us through that progression. And so, you know, like I know that, you know, that it, it, through progress is failure. Uh, you have to fail uh, at some point in time before you reach success. And so we've, we've, we've experienced that. But I think that kind of tells this story that these kids, these seniors who have been here for four years, they've seen some failures. And now they've had the opportunity through those failures to experience some success. Yeah, now they're seeing these changes. That's Absolutely. exactly right. So that's what I would speak to. Well, thanks for um, g giving us a few minutes to tell people about the inside of Absolutely. your school, all, all sections of it. And yes, people are talking about the changes that, that you're seeing. For good seeing. reason. That's right. That's good. Right. So that's that's, that's, right. that's that's wonderful. Congratulations. Wow. Everybody will be watching. Good luck for the to the whole school um, this week for that for the final four. So thanks Absolutely. for joining us and we'll be back with more. And the 2019 Alabama High School Northwest Regional Champion in Class 7 will be the Hewitt Trustful Lady Huskies 72 to 56 as they knock out the defending state champion with a celebration at its start. Hello and welcome back to the Final Four edition of Tribune Sports Live. I'm Zach Steele here with Coach Tanya Hunter and the entire Hewitt Trustful Lady Basketball Team, the Northwest Regional Champions. And Coach, to get there, you had to beat a team that had beaten you four times this year. That's Your thoughts correct. on that ball game and this team that you, that you just beat in Spain Park? We knew coming in that they were in our um, tournament, our Bryant Bank tournament. So this year we just kind of made sure that we were just – just play the best we can every time, every single time. And uh, um, so we just, every game, we just took something from it. So going into the game, was there anything you changed in the game plan, or was it just we're going to do it a little bit better this time? Well, we just went in saying the best version of us. I mean, we played them. We knew each other. They knew us. And they were all close games. And they were all close games, and uh, we just wanted to be the best version of us. Well, you, you did a fantastic job, and the thing that I noticed most about it was – you went inside to, uh -huh. to your, your big players and, and got a lot of high percentage shots. You forced them to take a lot of low percentage outside shots, and that proved to be the difference to right. me. So coming up, we've got Auburn in the Final Four. What do you know about Auburn? Uh, we know that um, they're right now 24 and three, so they have three losses. And I mean, they're senior, they're senior heavy, and I mean, they're very athletic, very fast. So we got a challenge in front of us. Very good. And there, there are some really good teams. When you get to the Final Four, you're looking at some really yes, good exactly teams, right. I'm, I'm sure. Um, one of the things that you guys did in your scheduling this year is you scheduled a lot of tough opponents. Yes. I mean, there were a lot of very good teams on your schedule. Talk a little bit about that and how that helped you. Um, I think um, we sat down the other day and just looked at the – on Friday, looked at all the teams that we played, and all our ten losses are from ranked opponents. Um, so – we went in, we, on, we played Houston out of Tennessee. They're number one in the state and favored to win the state title. Our own is probably going to be in the final four. So we went in with a young team and just try to learn each game, how we can get better each game and play on a higher level. And you mentioned a young team. This is a young team. You've mm -hmm. got one senior sitting over there this who's done a great right. job this year, by the way. Um, how do you mesh a group of – 10th graders and 9th graders and even a 7th grader mixed in here and there and and how does that mesh? Um, it, it was very different for us the first time especially for me to mesh 
an age group from 12 all the way up to 18 because they're all girls and they all different levels of thinking. So, um, I mean, it was it was tough throughout the year, but towards the end, um, they all start believing in each other. No matter what age, they all start believing in each other. Um, Morgan is a huge leader. Um, everybody start believing in. She's been there. They start listening. So I think that's that's what we turn we turn. Well, it's been fun to watch. I can tell you, just watching you guys over the season and and your progression and getting better and better, seemingly every week. Uh, just a fantastic job by you and your and your coaching staff. Uh, they've they've just done an amazing job, and we wish you the best of luck Thursday. The yeah. game's at nine o'clock. Thursday morning. We hope everybody can get out and make it. Um, hoping for a big crowd down at the Civic Center, uh, and we're hoping we'll see you guys in the state championship. And hey, if you guys win that state championship, we're going to have you back here next week to talk about that too. So congratulations to you again. Your Northwest Region Champions in 7A, the, uh, the Final Four repre representing Trussell for the first time in the Final Four in women's basketball, the Hewitt Trussell Lady Huskies. Congrats, go Tony. Thank you. At Alabama Orthopedic Spine and Sports, we partner with you to create a comprehensive treatment plan and, if needed, the most advanced surgical options available. Alabama Orthopedic Spine and Sport, like having a doctor in the family.